to remain in Washington. That's what I've done it for. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Next one. <laughs> right. That is... Somebody said to me, can I, do, can I make Buzz Aldrin? No, you wouldn't be able to do an astronaut because of the helmet. I can't believe you can make an helmet that small. The, the helmet is smaller than a blood cell, the helmet on the head. But it's perfectly proportioned. As you can see, he has a camera. The flag was, I had to make the flag waving. The, the, fla the, the, the pole is made out of a, a floating fiber out of the air. You know when you see when you see fibers floating in the air? I went round and I picked a fiber out of the air and I made the flag pole. The flag itself is made from a piece of uh, material which I found on the floor. I didn't know what it was. I, I looked at it and I found that it was a piece of plastic. So I stretched it and I kept on stretching it and I cut it into a little shape. And I noticed it, it had almost a shape like a flag. The painting, I really did have to use a dead fly's hair to paint that. <laughs> because that was when I realized that because it was such a small flag, I couldn't find any air on my face that would allow me to paint. Um, the actual, the, the, the astronaut himself is made from a piece of a cable tie, the stuff you tie cables with. The helmet, I made that out of, um, I got a needle and polished a needle into like a ball at the end very very tiny and I took a, uh, a piece of uh, plastic and I pushed it into the plastic very gentle so it didn't come through the other side and it, it formed like a dome shape then I had to cut the dome away at the, at the side very very gently and as I was cutting away static electricity pulled it onto my, to the end of my finger and I had to keep on releasing it till I could get it and then I had to place it on his head it's not only has he got a helmet but he actually has a face underneath the helmet which you can't see at the moment because <laughs> he's got a helmet on <laughs> but um, that, that one took me about seven, seven and a half weeks uh, to, rep to make them stand in the eye of the needle what I do, I drill microscopic holes and then I, I use my pulse just as a little jackhammer to knock them into position so that they stand where they are um, the hardest thing is to get the hand to salute without touching the helmet because if it touches the helmet while you're painting it then the hand's stuck to the head and so the whole thing starts to, to behave in a different way because it's so small it's very difficult to explain in exact words it needs a, I need a scientist to actually explain everything that I do because I can't explain it properly it's just a gift that I have um, it's, it's because I have to do this because my mother told me to do it, so this, this is what I do. <laughs> what you're seeing there is my, my ex-girlfriend's eyelash. <laughs> she, um, one of her eyelashes came out, so I, I picked the eyelash up and I decided to put Charlie Chaplin on the end of the eyelash. <laughs> um, that was very difficult because the eyelash turned into a catapult. So I lost three Charlie Chaplins. <laughs> now as you can see, the end of the eyelash is going through his leg. So what I did, I made a, a microscopic hole in his foot and I pushed the eyelash up. I didn't push it too far because it would have done some damage to him. <laughs> so he's just gone up between his leg and up there. So the whole thing is sort of made from... He's carved from a piece of, of nylon, which I pulled out of my shirt. The actual cane is made from a fibre from my socks. The, the hat is made from a, another piece of fibre from my jacket. And the shirt is, is painted and the tie, as you can see, is another piece of fiber. Now the eyelash travels up his leg through his jacket and through and I made part of the eyelash become the the tie.
but I had to slice the eyelash about eight times to make it thin enough to pass through. Um, so that one, I would say, took me, I would say, probably six and a half weeks, not quite as long as the others, but it's because I, I'm getting better, that's why. <laughs> Next one. Right. right. That's um, that. That was a bit of a challenge. I wanted to um, create a ship. It's made from 24 karat gold, and it's rigged with the web of a spider. Um, the ship had to be c constructed gradually. I, I sliced. I had an old ring, 24 karat gold ring. And I, I, I got a scalpel blade and scraped the ring and all the flakes of gold came off underneath the microscope and I flattened each one of them out under the microscope very gently and then sliced them again into little beams and constructed each one so the ship is actually built. I had to make little, um, get pieces of gold and squeeze them together and use my full dexterity to be able to to actually make sure that the ship is actually the hull of the ship's built. The mask of the ship is is made from the same type of material. Obviously, that's gold as well. And I had to drill little holes into the ship, into the into the deck of the ship, and then just push it through very very gently. I use an eyelash to apply the pressure because of the um, the gold was the gold was that thin, um, and then I had to use. The, the, I found a spider, and I, I let the spider walk along the table, and then a very tiny spider. And I took the strands of web away from the spider. Then I said to the spider, "Thank you very much." And then he said, "Thank you." <laughs> he was a British spider, so he <laughs> went about his way. And then I um, started to rig the ship. Rigging the ship is very difficult because the, the spider's web wouldn't release. And I found out that spider's web happens to be the strongest material on earth, pound for pound, stronger than steel. So I'm glad I asked the spider to borrow the web. Um, that ship is um, is, gonna, is going on exhibition at the moment. I have a few, a lot of people looking at that ship right now. Um, I, I had the needle there just to show you, you know, the scale. That one took me about seven seven weeks to do, um, but it's a little bit too big. I work with about 800 times magnification. Um, when I work on that level, you know, it, it, it magnifies your movement. So what you're seeing is movement because it's movement that you wouldn't wouldn't normally see. So what happens? Everything starts to move. So what I do that that's when I have to really control my my, my nervous system. That's when I have to work between the heartbeat. That's when it all starts to uh, become detrimental otherwise. So if you don't do that, that's when things will go wrong. No, I look through the microscope to do it. In, impossible for me to do it with a naked eye. When I was a kid growing up, I was working with a naked eye. But then it got too small. So I knew I'd then I had to um, use a microscope. Is it, is it working? Taking a bit of time. <laughs> any questions here? I, I'm, I'm ready to answer any questions. I was a little bit nervous at first, but I'm, I'm now warming up a little bit, so I can, act, I can talk to you now because I was a bit shy at first, but I'm okay. Well, I made a little voodoo doll of her and stuck pins in her. <laughs> See, there, there you are. Um, that, that teacher, since I've become famous, I've had lots of emails from uh, my past teachers and, and people I don't even know, actually. They come out of the woodwork. Remember me? I sat next to you at school. I'm your best friend. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> I'll look after you. <laughs> you know, I get a lot of that now. 
But you know what happens? You see, when people reach a level of success, you know, especially if they went through a hard time, you know, people start to want to know you 